Hello everybody! So today we're going to be looking at the topic of DNS and how DNS is used to convert a URL into an IP address. Now before we get into what DNS actually is, we need to understand a little bit more about the World Wide Web. So let's say you're about to make a website and you're going to buy something called a domain. So the domain is the actual name that people will remember. So like bbc.co.uk or ebay.co.uk. So the, this is the actual domain that we remember, the eBay part of it, for example, or Mr. Moore CS. Now, when somebody buys a domain, it has to be hosted on something known as a web server. Now, when I say hosted, it means that that's where people will actually connect to, to be able to access the website itself. So people will pay for their website to be hosted on a web server somewhere in the world. So the URL is usually nice and memorable. It's why they're so expensive for ones which are really short and easy to remember. Now, because that website is being stored on a web server, to be able to access that web server, we would need something known as an IP address. Now, an IP address is just a long string of numbers, which is the location of where that is. So because we are able to remember the name of a domain, but it's unlikely that we can remember the IP address of where that website will be stored, that's where DNS is used so that you don't have to remember the IP address. The DNS part of it will translate the name of the website into the IP address so that you don't need to remember the IP address and then your website will still appear in front of you on your browser. So you can think of it a bit like a phone book. So you might not remember your friend's mobile number, but you remember their name, hopefully. So let's say you've got a friend called Bob. You can click on Bob and it will call Bob. However, you probably don't remember Bob's number off the top of your head. So all you need to remember is the name Bob. You click on it, it dials it. And it works in the exact same way with DNS because you can remember the name of the website, but not the number that's associated with it. So these are the steps that are involved with DNS. So the website gets hosted on a web server. We've already talked about that. The web server has an IP address. Your browser, something like Google Chrome or Edge, sends the URL to DNS, which don't forget is like a system which is being used. So DNS will then find that IP address that's linked to the URL. Now let's say you've made a spelling mistake and you've gone to type in Mr. Moore CS, but then you've actually put like Mr. Moore CD and it doesn't exist. Now at first DNS will try and pass that request to a higher DNS, which means it's gonna look elsewhere to see if that website actually exists. But if it doesn't exist and it can't find it, it will just return an error. But if it does find it, that's when it will send all of that data to you and the website will load up correctly. So here's an example question about DNS where it doesn't actually use the word DNS in the question itself. So the IP address 192.130.129.226 see it's hard to remember, is linked to the website with the URL of mrmorecs.co.uk. When mrmorecs.co.uk is entered into a browser, the website homepage is loaded. Describe the relationship between the website URL, mrmorecs.co.uk, the IP address and the web server. So as you can see, it is talking about the process of DNS without talking about the process of DNS. So you need to realize that that's what it's talking about and then relay those different steps that I've given you on the previous slide. Now you could actually bullet point your answer on this one, but sometimes it's nice to just maybe use parts of the scenario as well. So if a user was going to visit mrmorecs.co.uk, they would type in the URL, but your answer could look like this. So the website host is on a web server. The website slash web server has an IP address. The browser sends the URL to DNS. The URL has a linked IP, so DNS finds the IP. If DNS can't find the IP, it passes it to a higher DNS, but if not found, an error is returned. And finally, the web server sends the web page and all that data to the user. And that's it for this one. See you next time.